In 2012, two families left the city along with the conveniences of modern American living. It's today that these two families have relocated themselves in the mountains of the American Ozarks to build for themselves a more sustainable and fulfilling lifestyle. We are American Homestead! This week on An American Homestead, it's been three years that Jamie and Joanne have been doing laundry off-grid, and there's no sign of them slowing down. And this week, our garden's gravity-fed water system is up and working. Thanks for watching, and be sure to visit us online at anamericanhomestead.com. doing laundry by hand for about two and a half years. I've been told that laundry is the number one thing that women worry about when thinking about living off-grid or thinking about living with limited electricity. They worry about doing laundry. I've even had women tell me that if it wasn't for the laundry, they would be all for it, to move off-grid and live without electricity. If you're a mom and you're watching this and you have a family, you know that doing laundry can be a really big chore. I kind of laugh when I see people post things on Facebook or talk about how they took all day to do laundry and I understand it's a big chore, but I also understand that they're putting it in the washing machine and pressing a button, right? Okay, so you can walk away and do other things. I've been doing our laundry for my husband and me. Uh, for the last three years, it was quite a bit different from uh, using a washer and dryer, of course. There's not too much difference in that and just washing by hand like you would do in the kitchen sink or something like that. It's just that I do mine in a six-gallon six bucket with a thing that's called a mobile washer. I can't imagine doing my laundry any other way right now because I've done it now for three years and it works really well. Um, when you live off-grid, it is a hands-on chore. There really are ways to make it simpler and I talk about that in my article where I give my tips to doing laundry. If you're interested in doing it long-term, I would definitely say invest in the proper equipment. And the number one thing that makes laundry doable for me in a, on a long-term basis is my hand wringer. And that can be pricey. I just had a lady email me today actually looking for the hand wringer that I use or a recommendation for the best one. And I've really only seen one on the market, one new one. Um, there's old fashioned versions out there, but one new one on the market. It's called the best hand wringer. Um, that's actually what it's called, the best hand wringer. And the best price I've seen is on Amazon right now. It's $150. So that's kind of pricey if you're looking to get started, but if you're looking to make a long-term investment in doing laundry this way, I would definitely say get that ringer. It makes it really doable, and you can do it. So get out there and try, especially try this summer. It's a great summer activity. I have written a few articles about doing laundry, and we have them on our website if you'd like to check those out. Just go to the search bar on our website at AmericanHomestead.com and search for laundry or search for clothes. All of those articles will come up if you're looking for more information. If you're interested in getting started or learning how to do your laundry without electricity by hand, just click on this link and it'll take you to my article that talks about my own tips for doing laundry off-grid.
our rain catchment system is complete. It works if you turn it on, it, it, the water runs out, no problem, it looks great. We're using this on a daily basis uh, you know, to water our garden and, and, and give the crops and the, and the, and the produce. We, we are growing the water that they need to require to grow and be abundant. And so working out great, I'm very excited to finally have the system in place. And I think maybe years down the road, maybe next year sometime, we'll try to put in some sort of drip line uh, system attached to it so that we can have a gravity fed drip line system throughout the garden. And uh, it was just a really ingenious way to drive this underneath the road and uh, lay down the pipe and get this thing working. This is really gonna take, up, uh, take out a lot of effort on our part in getting water to the garden on a weekly or monthly basis the way we've been doing it before. As spring is uh, honest and summer is just around the corner, we've been concentrating on water collection. Uh, it's been a real priority for us this spring. We've started by putting all the guttering on all of our outbuildings, and more specifically, the outhouse, we got gutter up there so we could provide water into our garden. The gutter that I use is just a standard uh, vinyl guttering I bought from one of the box stores. And the water tanks are 250 gallon tanks that we bought off uh, Craigslist. I built a foundation for the water tanks so I'd have a drop of about five or six feet into the garden so we'd have adequate water pressure. From the tanks, I ran inch and a half PVC Schedule 40 pipe down to the garden so we'd have, there again, a lot of head pressure going into the valve. You know, being a homesteader who is also a farmer, you know, water is so vitally important. We need water. We need a good amount of water every year so that we can apply it to our garden and the food that we grow uh, so that we can save up the food that we're going to need for that coming year. Uh, and so having enough water is, is so vitally important. I don't think there's anything scarier uh, than for a farmer or a homesteader than being cut off from water or going through a drought uh, that doesn't allow you to grow the, produ the products that are going to sustain you and your family. And so, uh, I mean, that, you know, looking back throughout history, that was one of the most prominent fears of homesteaders was not being able to acquire the water needed uh, to be able to survive. And not just water for drinking or cleanliness, it was water for growing things and growing plants and watering your animals. And so, uh, you know, having this extra amount of tanks, the, the two extra tanks here that equal about five, over 500 gallons of water, that, that is so much uh, a blessing to have that and to you be able to utilize that water and run it directly into the garden so that we can apply it quickly and effectively to our garden and plants. So uh, this is going to really play a part uh, coming down the road uh, for years to come. This year we have an abundance of water. It's just coming like you would not believe. There's so much water. The water table is very high. A lot of the uh, southern Midwest has been just inundated with uh, rainfall. Uh, but I think about the years you know, coming forward where we may not have the kind of rainfall that we're getting now. What do we do then? Springs are usually going to bring some rains. So being able to capture as much of that water as possible and then being able to put it into the ground where we need it the most is, you know, paramount in my opinion. There's only one state that I know of right now that does not allow water collection or water catchment and that's the state of Colorado and even some of their restrictions have eased up a bit in the last year. Um, but there, uh, most states, most, where most people live around the rest of the country, you'll be able to do that. You'll be able to catch your own water if you want to and be able to harness that and use it for other places on your homestead. Uh, so uh, check with the rules and regulations where you live, but I'm sure for most of the U.S. you can still do this. Uh, there was that one story that came out about Colorado a couple years ago, uh, but they have, uh, from what I understand, relaxed a lot of those restrictions, and so that's a very positive thing for homesteaders. Listen, water is paramount, and uh, this is working out really good. I think we're going to do this in other places around the homestead, especially the houses. Uh, but we're going to try to catch as much water as we can and utilize that water on the homestead so that it goes back into the water table, but it goes back in the method and in the way we want it to. And you know, really what it comes down to is good conservation management, good land management. And that's what really what this is all about. Here we 
we are today in the aquaponic system and it's growing great. There's all kinds of things growing in here from corn to strawberries to kale to uh, peppers to tomatoes to cucumbers. Just an amazing amount of growth in here and we're having a lot of success this year with it. So what I want to take a look at today is the corn that we have in the greenhouse. Um, it, it, uh, it's a variety that we purchased from Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds and we ordered two varieties. One I planted in the garden that's just doing absolutely phenomenal. And then the variety I planted here in the aquaponics, it's you know somehow not doing so well. I'm thinking that's I'm thinking that's probably due to some sort of deficiency. And so, but however, some of the ears of corn are doing well, and the silk is now starting to die back, which is letting me know that it's about time for it to be harvested. Even though it's small, there's still some good edible corn here that we can harvest. And because it grew so fast, it's only not even mid June yet. We can go ahead and take some of this. I'm gonna go ahead and replant. Uh, some of the seeds I still have left over from this corn and so maybe we'll get I'm sure we'll get a second uh, Harvest out of the grow beds that we have this corn in so what we're gonna do today is harvest some of the corn We're gonna take it in the kitchen. We're gonna eat it for dinner tonight But I want to go ahead and just walk you through and show you uh, The results that we had with this corn and then when the corn in the garden is finally finished That's gonna be some time yet. We'll go ahead and walk you through that as well But I just thought I'd take you through the greenhouse and just show you all what's growing and go ahead and harvest some of this corn Okay, so there's a few. I mean, not the greatest corn harvest of all time, but you know, you know, they don't look that bad. Let's open them up and take a look and see what they look like. Um, okay, so um, not the biggest corn, but for sure, uh, you can eat that. Absolutely, you can eat that. Some of the corn ended up looking like this, this little tiny guy here. But you can still boil that and eat that for sure, and that's what we're going to do tonight for dinner. Um, but you know, this is not bad. It's just something that you just gotta go with the flow on. Like that one didn't doesn't look so good either. But there's still some corn on there, and we're gonna eat it. Now the cool thing about all this is, is that this took about 45 or days or less to grow. I think 40 days, 40 to 45 days to grow. It grew really super fast in the aquaponics system. And uh, I may check with my friend Travis to see uh, what he thinks maybe the issue might be, but. He told me not to do corn anyway in the aquaponics. So anyway, but that still looks pretty good. Now here's another one. I mean, this is something that, you know. So there you go. It's real, it's real small corn, but you can still eat that. And so uh, I think we're going to go ahead and get these in the kitchen and eat these tonight for dinner. The cool thing is with all this is that this took about 40, 45 days to grow. And so that gives me plenty of time. It's only the middle of June, not even the middle of June yet. I can put more seed in the ground, more seed in the grow beds, and come up with a whole other harvest, a small harvest like this. And that'll provide, you know, dinner for a night. You know, that we can eat that tonight. Um, my, my young kids will, eat, will chew on that, no problem, for sure. And so uh, I'm looking forward to buttering a few of these up and, and eating these tonight. So, you know, a small harvest, short harvest. Overall, everything else in the greenhouse is growing magnificently, and uh, you know I can't complain. We got lots of cucumbers that are growing like crazy. The peppers are going out; they're just doing outstanding. The tomatoes are all over the place, and the basil's coming up. Um, so I can't really have—I don't really have a big problem. Yeah, this is our first time growing corn in here, 
the corn outside is doing magnificently and we're going to go through that you know when we get some good ears on that uh, when, when the time comes so this is another variety of corn sold by baker creek heirloom seeds uh, we ordered this this is the black uh, the black incan corn and it has a growing uh, length of 150 to 180 days so a very long growing period uh, for this corn and it gets up to 15 feet tall right now that corn is about you know at least seven to eight feet tall and going and so we'll see how tall this stuff gets but i'm really looking forward to it. it's got real thick stalks really uh strong stalks behind me and not spindly at all and it looks like it's growing really well so i'm really looking forward to seeing what how this turns out but you'll have to tune in for another episode for this because it still has a ways to go so we'll keep you updated Thanks for tuning in each week. We really appreciate you watching and sharing our videos with your friends and family. If you haven't already, please like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll see you next time on An American Homestead.